Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dian Chronicles here on this Destiny 2 video and today we'll be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for March 2nd, 2021. In today's weekly reset, the first and biggest important thing is that we have double ordeal rewards. You can see this message as soon as you log into Destiny 2, which is very important because you get a bunch of rewards, which also might give you more chances of getting the Nightfall Unique. Now I, I cannot confirm this as we've not done it yet, but usually double ordeal rewards means that you get the chance for everything twice. Twice. You get the chance of getting two exotics to drop, or two ascended shards, or two of the Nightfall uniques, as we've seen in previous Nightfalls. So this week should be the Shadow Price, the Assault Rifle, or the Auto Rifle. If you want to get the Auto Rifle, it's going to be the easiest this week. And the best difficulty to farm it on is Master or Legend, depending on your light level. I also wanted to mention that currently there is nothing very close on the calendar. You can see the next item is going to be on March 23rd, another Iron Banner, as well as another Proving Ground Strike that opens for the season pass holders. Moving on with the weekly reset, starting up with the Nifle Ordeal. The Nifle Ordeal this week is gonna be the Saber Strike. Now we've never actually seen this mission. I believe it's the first time we've seen it, or at least I have not played it myself in Destiny 2. It is a Destiny 1 returning mission with a lot of arc. I'm just gonna warn you ahead of time, if it's the same as Destiny 1, there's a lot of arc. So equip a Risk Runner if you like it. Beyond that, obviously, I have no idea what the point scoring is. My assumption is it's gonna be Legend. Legend is usually what you need to get 100k. And as you can tell, the Nightfall weapon is gonna be common on either Legend or Master, so I guess it just doesn't matter this week, huh? And the champions are gonna be Overload and Barrier. For the Crucible playlist, the rotating Crucible playlist is gonna be Mayhem. Now, Mayhem is just a lot of supers, abilities, heavy ammo, just absolute mayhem, and it is a lot of fun. You should also keep in mind that the first week we had a Mayhem thing, which I actually did not play, and I can still do that this week if I want to, keeping in mind that any of these things can be completed at any point. So if you want to double up on doing Mayhem twice, you can do that. Although, I guess this one says Competitive Crucible this time. There's another Proving Ground, huh? Of course, of course there is. Proving 4. Cool. Moving on to Europa, first and foremost, for the Empire Hunt, we have the Dark Priestess. For the simulation, it will be Survival. I believe Survival is the one with the cold, and you just have to run and do the jump puzzle. And for the Deepstone Creamery Raid, we have the Core 4. It's going to be taking place in the final encounter during the boss fight, and in this encounter, you just have to break off all four cores off the boss at once. Usually, people would do this normally, so it's pretty easy and pretty quick. This is basically just stonks right here. This is free pinnacle gear. Stonks, my brethren, stonks. We got an exotic chest armor. Okay, all right. The Legend Lost Sector's chest this week, or at least today. So if you wanted to do that, I just happened to notice it. For the moon stuff, first and foremost, for the nightmare hunts, we have things like Skola, Zydron, and Omnigal. Zydron being the easiest because you can hide up in the rafters and shoot at enemies without them being able to shoot you, which I hear is very useful. For the Garden of Salvation raid, we have A Link to the Chain. It's gonna be taking place in the second encounter of the raid, and in this encounter, basically anytime you link to the relay, every single person has to be part of some link. It can be at different relays, but it has to be at approximately the same time. There's a special strategy for this one, you might wanna look it up. Moving on to Ever versus Inventory. That's a really cool looking ghost shell right there. Look at that thing. That looks like a thumbnail material because it's easy to clip out. Look at him. He's like a it's like a like a scarab. I wonder what this is from. Yo! What is this one? Oh baby! Moving on with the rest of the Eververse stuff. I was just like looking at this stuff to see what's up. I am definitely looking forward to this with Bright Dust. We have an ornament for the truth. I don't think we've seen this actually being sold for Bright Dust, or at least it's been a very long time and it is available. We also have the Butter Bark, if you... I... whatever this thing is. For the other Bright Dust section, first of all, we have the Potent Mixture, which I imagine you just kind of mix some stuff and it maybe explodes. I, I don't know. Uh, you also have the Sin... Whatever this thing is called, I had this uh, in a previous one with uh, silver, so now it's available for break dust if you want it. A ship here called the Gigantus Carrier, which is actually from this season. It's a very unique looking model. I have an ornament for the Stompies. A lot of people do like Stompies, so it may be good. We also have an arm piece for whatever class you're currently using. I'm currently on my Hunter, so I see the Hunter one. But if you're on a different class, you're going to see something else. Definitely something I would really like to pick up on my Titan. I really like the full set, and the shoulders are pretty good. We also have an ornament for the uh, Bastion, which looks absolutely sick. I think this is the best ornament for the Bastion. If you don't have it and you like the Bastion, I, I would highly recommend it. Got some ghost projections, more transmat effects across the bottom. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Amethyst Bloom is another very pink one if you want to make things look very pink and neon. Uh, Iridescent Coral actually looks pretty cool on certain things. Perhaps not this particular armor set, but it does actually look cool. The rest of them are kind of wishy-washy, depending on what you want. To Hawthorne! No way! 
And finally, for Hawthorne's inventory, showing off her weekly raid challenge. Hey, look, I got some free stuff here. Showing off her weekly raid challenge that's available for the Last Wish raid. It's going to be Strength of Memory. It's going to be taking place in the final encounter of the Last Wish raid. And in this encounter, you cannot shoot the same eye twice. If you're doing it the regular way, i.e. the way that Bungie intended, you just have to switch with somebody else whenever you get the same eye. If you're doing it the Lament way, you don't have to worry about it. That's the end of the weekly reset. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, concerns, something I missed, or something that you think I should be adding to these weekly resets. Keeping in mind, I try to just cover the major weekly stuff. I'm not going to go to every single vendor showing off stuff that may not be applicable for endgame stuff. For example, the vendor stuff from Zavala or Shax. They're not endgame because they're maxed out at 48 to 50. Also, make sure you come check out my live streams that I have right after this video and all the other times you can see on screen right now. We oftentimes have open lobby raids, knife falls, and stuff. Most likely Likely we'll be doing some power grinds, uh, some presage, some dungeons, some raids, whatever. Come join us. We play on PC. And of course, huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, I want to give a big thank you to Manny Boudou, Mom and Dad, Joe Smith, Manny, Natalie Halpin, Steve Bachnowitz, Justin Rara, Raymond Showman, Unipanther, Panther, Cole Sherman, and Casey Reagan for the support on Patreon. And of course, thank you so much for joining us, and I'll see you guys on the next one.